Yeah. Hello, Sarah. Welcome today. Can you just share with us who you are and why you're here, what your intention is to share with me today? Okay, Claire. Well, thank you for asking me to come along. I am Sarah Burkhard. Um, I'm an interior and textile designer. So I work with private clients in their homes, either online or in real life. And I work with commercial projects in the hospitality industry. So restaurants or bars, that kind of boutique hotel sort of space as well. And I just wanted to come on because we had a very brief chat at a networking event, I think. And you said something that really struck me, which was, oh, maybe my ladies would like something creative. <laughs> and I thought, oh, ladies that might want something creative. And my intention today is to share what I do in my world of work, but more importantly, share my sort of, most current project which is to bring people who have an aptitude for creativity together whether they're makers whether they're creators designers stylists or just people who love that stuff and like watching the great design challenge on telly um who just kind of like textiles like pattern like color like fabrics whatever it is i've got a space where that's hopefully going to be easier to connect and more accessible for everybody who's interested in the stuff that I love. Oh, we're going to have a lovely chat. I'm yeah. so excited you're here. Thank you, Thank Sarah. You. Excellent. So share that again, because we were yeah. talking about what workspace and, you know, when last time I spoke to Sarah, I was somewhere completely different. I was turned around that way or that way. And we're just saying that it's really nice to, to have that fresh, that fresh outlook and Sarah was sharing how her workspace, how she utilizes what she does with a big oval white table. Yes, I do. So I was agreeing that basically I think there's two ways about having a tidy up of the space. And the first is that it can be quite a good reason or slash excuse to not get on with what you should be doing. Mm. So sometimes I do think, oh, I really don't want to face that thing I've got to do. So suddenly I've got a miraculously tidy pants drawer. <laughs> 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 and, you know, we've all been there. We all do it. And there we go. But the other thing I think is on a more sort of productive note, actually, I have a bit of a ritual when I'm going to either do my finance, which I really have to fo focus on, or I do some really deep dive kind of creative work for clients I work as you mentioned Claire on a big white oval table and as the week goes on my table gets busier with leads and cables and bits of paper and coffee cups and notebooks and sketchbooks and crayons and pens and I basically have this ritual where I go right you've got half an hour this is all in my head I probably speak out loud I don't know if anyone ever listening um but I, you've got half an hour and I just clear that table and I end up with this sort of gleaming I wish I could show you now but it's full of all the stuff yeah, <laughs> um, it's almost like your brain yeah, it's like it's a brain tabs brain. all open yeah. my yeah. I'm a tabs all open kind of girl and then yeah. I'm like if I leave here, it's almost like I'm spinning all the plates. Yeah, yeah. And then when you close them all down, it feels, it's like a feeling of satisfaction, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's very similar. Um, talking about kind of interiors to making your bed in the morning yeah. and I mean I don't really know anybody at this stage in my life who doesn't do this but I might be wrong Every, each to their own yeah you know, live and let live and all of that but I have to make my bed pretty much as soon as I get out of it um, you know I'll go and make a cup of tea or whatever and do my do my bathroom stuff but once I've made my bed and it's all pristine and it all looks lovely and it's puffed up and lovely for me to get then I just again I feel like I'm ready for the day the thought of having a bed unmade, oh, yeah. just it bothers me. It bothers me in a way that is disproportionate to the reality of it. But I, I think understand I think that. Is, yeah. Maybe that's a creative thing because there's so many similarities and it's really relevant because one of the first step one that I say to yeah. my clients is to choose a space to declutter, a yeah. space that you're in control of. So imagine, I mean, this is so relevant for the whole purpose of the exercise, why we're talking today. But yeah. imagine if loads of things are going wrong in your life. Not even a lot, just even a little bit. Lots of things a little bit going wrong. Yeah. And everything is overwhelming. Where do you start? Where do yeah. you start? And you're not always in control of everything that's in your life. So what I tend to ask clients to do is choose some space. Like I say my nigga draw or your yeah. nigga bag your handbag, something where you don't have to say, can we get rid of this? Something yeah. that you're in control. Totally. And then after that, this next step is to write down everything, like a brain dump, and yeah. work it out what can you control today. 
And the greatest thing is your environment, whether it's your Absolutely. work environment or yeah. just where you enjoy your time. Yeah. And, and that's why I was so excited when I met you. I met you on a um, network and a, a lovely, yeah. we both spoiled ourselves to a spa weekend. That's right. Didn't we? And, and we yeah. ended up sitting on the same table. And sometimes these networking events, you're not quite sure what you get out of it when you walk yeah. away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's not no. until a while later, we must have just been spinning in the same world. Yes. And, and I knew that you had this creative interiors and I've got property. I love all of that. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, it'd be so nice to have you to come on and, you know, obviously share what you do. And yeah, it's yeah. Just a different topic to talk well, about. I think, yeah, I think it's really interesting what you say, because I've looked carefully, obviously, at your five steps, which are amazing. And I've kind of thought about how that translates so directly to what I would suggest in terms of a creative process. Oh. So the way I work with clients is different to you. Um, but ultimately, I think any good relationship with a, with a client or a working relationship is a step by step process, isn't it? And in terms of kind of having that first stage and blank canvas, like you're talking about a knicker drawer or this, that, and the other, what I would also add to that, because I think that's a fantastic um, little ritual or way to get started or for people to help themselves feel that they're in line with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's a great first step. And I would offer alongside that, I would say, go out, Shopaholic of stationery is here. Go out and treat yourself because this is a new, you know, a new project, let's call it. Treat yourself to a really lovely stationary type of sketchbook. And I'm talking about something like, like this sort of thing where it's bound. Ooh. This is actually leather. I mean, this is fancy. This was a special one. And this was, I don't know if you can see there, this was for... Oh, yeah. For furlough. And then I've got so another like a one. chapter in your life. Yeah, I love exactly. that. I've got a bigger one here, which is... Oh, cool! So I've got, I mean, like 40, 45 of them sitting over there. Or different, you could, you can get a little one, you can get a big one, whatever. Just get something that appeals to you, the colour, the shape. You know, I spend a disproportionate amount of time on stationery looking at, you know, do I want something portrait? Do you want something landscape? I would suggest you get it unlined. And then basically that's your blank page. And that's where you start. And this is the best tip I can give anybody for a sketchbook. Because as a creative, we all know, it's a bit like that white table I'm talking about. To have the blank canvas, if you know what you're going to do in it, then that's a really fantastic space to start working. If, however, like most people in a creative, this is a new zone, a new thing, a new project for me, definitely, you have a blank page and it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. So here's my tip that I learned. Yeah, at stay in... there a little bit, Sarah, because that's yeah. what I wrote down. I wrote that down. That would be my biggest overwhelm. Yeah. Let's keep it nice. And then I would even go to, it would flash in my head. I might re-gift it. I might gift it to someone actually, because it's a little bit indulgent. And, yeah. you know, maybe I was, I was being silly. Like yeah. it was probably six quid. And this yes. would go round and round in my head before I even put, put a mark on it. Yeah, well, old me, old me, not that. Yeah, but that's a very interesting psychological process. And these are the little, little hurdles that we all have to jump over to make progress. And I understand that. And I get that fact that when you're in the stationery shop and it's, oh, Claire and Sarah, that was really interesting. I must come. And then you buy it and you get it and you get it home. And exactly then it's like, and... Now I'm on my own. It feels like you said, I, I feel a bit odd about it. It's not my thing. It's a bit or, silly. Yeah, yeah. So actually there's another interesting, I would say, tip about interiors that I'll give you and me. And I found this so helpful. Just about when I was much younger, I used to live near Totten Court Road and my ritual with my small kid in a pushchair, because I wasn't able to work at that stage, was to go into Heels and Habitat and interior shops on, on Totten Court Road. And I remember in Habitat, they had this display of amazing colored glasses. They were like rainbows, like just literally oh, yeah. glasses. Nothing, they weren't no, nothing special. I think, I think it cost like £1.20 for a glass. So I bought two, one for my husband and one for me. And I was so excited and I chose, um, I think they were like an aqua color, like a lovely turquoise color and this amazing display. And I got them home and I put them on the shelf in my house and it was just like, they look crap. Oh, made because, everything else look a bit dull. <laughs> yeah, but because the, the secret of visual merchandising and marketing, if you dissect it, is volume. Yeah. 
yes. it's the amount it's the, the lights light, the lights all of that so I'm sure that many of people who who chat about this kind of thing know it but I didn't really get that until quite a long time ago so I think relating that to the sketchbook is similar in terms of you're looking at this blank page and suddenly what you felt in the shop and when you maybe felt listening to something you've talked about Claire isn't what you translate to that moment when you open the book yeah. so here's my tip that I actually use every time I start a new sketchbook which is basically don't think that you're going to put anything of any personality or value in to start with. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make a ground as in the ground of the earth, G-R-O-U-N-D. <laughs> and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna cover the page either in paint or another paper, something that gives you a texture. So oh, yeah. I would just get out a pot of um, home paint, like pale, I'd do a pale color. So I've got those little tester pots, you know? Oh yeah. And I've got a cream one, a very light gray one. I've got a sort of softy, sandy, beigey color one. And then you just literally paint the pages. Now, oh, yeah. you, you can't turn them over because they're wet. Uh -huh. So you can get a hairdryer and just dry them. And then you just paint like five or six pages. You've got nothing on there. There's no artistic, there's no right or wrong way, you know. But what you might do is what I like to do is sometimes I go across, sometimes I go down, sometimes I go squirrely whirly. You know, they could, you know, if you want to feel creative. I'm excited to do this. I want to do it with my kids. <laughs> but there's no pressure. You're not look you're in a creative space let's not get that wrong and that's a bit like you talking about you know changing your environment with a tiny part of it like your handbag mm -hmm. this is you know you are entering into a creative space you've got a paintbrush out you've got a pot of paint out you've got a sketchbook out but you're not having to be in inverted commas creative right or pressure's creative. off pressure's right off and it's so much fun and you dry it and drying it with the hair dryer is really fun because it's going to be crinkly and sort of crackly um, and basically do that with different colors. You can also just get rip bits out of magazine or paper. That's yeah, almost yeah, stage like two, but you can just to glue it on tissue paper, pale yeah. tissue paper, blue paper, anything that's going to give you what's called a ground, a texture to work from. And it makes and it yours, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I can yeah. see the value in that. Rather yeah. than, and you kind of then the next day, you're going to be a little bit proud of it because it's you've already created something yeah, yeah and then really Indeed. what we're doing here is playing so the next stage with that process is that you know it could be that it could be 10 minutes later it could be straight away or it could be in a week you know there's no time limit on any of these things it's when you're in the mood let's put it mm -hmm. that way when you feel oh I fancy doing that um and what you do then is get some color so it can be crayons, can be felt tips, can be paints, watercolors, can be anything from your kids. You know, just, we, we are not talking go out and buy stuff no. from anywhere fancy. You but know then what I sometimes do, do it just to interrupt you that point. Yeah. If permission, I have a box of felted pens, crayons, pencils, yeah. and I say, oh, I'm just working out. I'm I'm going through them to see which ones are, are ruined to ch throw. And yeah. I never get any further than that. That's always my step one. And then I'm going to do something creative. But even just doing that, I yeah. do that for probably 10 minutes and then that's it. And then yeah. a month goes by and I go, yeah. where's that thing? I'm going to go through them pencils again. But really, <laughs> I just want to see myself making a mark on the page, yeah. you know. And that's all you're doing is you're making marks and playing. So it's also then fun about some sometimes I really like this is something that people might not have. But I do have is cr uh, pencils that are water you know if you put water on them they they go like all a, right like, paint but you can try like chalk crayons anything makeup. pastels felt tips makeup anything and just make some colors just make I'm, I'm doing this with my hands on but you can't yeah. see just 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 engage the color with the ground that's all. Just make some marks, make some shapes, colour it in, put orange next to blue, put blue next to pink. Sarah, Just basically all have this, it. All of this is all about making decisions as well, isn't it? When the colours are there in front of you, when the stationery is there in front of you, when the shops... Which bus you you know you just start by making a decision yep. and you're letting go of the outcome. Absolutely. I think that is exactly Absolutely. the process. And, and you yeah, do and it you're right really from... good at articulating it. Yeah, yeah, that's or, really or good articulation. It. Oh, thank you. Yes. It's like my yeah, head no, of you, I would say that. I was saying, what yeah. are you actually doing here? Yeah. And I wrote down before when you were saying about going and choosing the stationary book. Being stood there, I'm not going to make that into something small. 
I have been in that situation where I've talked myself into having one, stood in front of them, and I haven't been able to decide which one to get. So I haven't bought one. I can yeah. remember doing that on several yeah. occasions, yeah. even before yeah. I bought one and worried about what to write in it. Yeah. You know, so I'm not making out that this is, you know, just going by a journal. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I can see the whole, every single step yeah. I remember, you know, and, and what was the other thing I wrote down? I can't read my own writing. Oh, um, oh, and you're learning out what you love. Yes. That's the thing as well, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. And I would say that to absolutely echo what you're saying, because you're really good at articulating it from a sort of, I don't know what the word is, but an analytical perspective, which is really useful. Whereas mine's definitely a creative instinct, but in effect, they're the same. We're talking mm -hmm. about exactly the same process. But I would like to stress that this isn't a process that I've done and now I'm accomplished at. This is a process I start every time I have a new client or a new project or a new chapter in my life. This is, you know, going right back to the beginning of going like spending half an hour in the shop. I mean, I, I've got two stationery shops literally beneath where I live. One is a lovely bookshop and they have as part of their bookshop some um, sketchbook moleskin things and then next door to it is a really lovely little interior shop where they have you know glasses and bowls and birthday cards and alongside that they have some stationery and notebooks so I'm telling you that every time I go in there and I'm like hmm who am I today <laughs> what's this book and then I think I'll just knit next door and make sure that the perfect one isn't there then yeah. I go next door and have a chat and I'm so and I'm like let me just check that. You know, this is a normal, natural way to, it to get. It's an icebreaker, really. And it I is. rely. Do you know what I think's interesting? When I look back at clothes I've bought in the past, or yeah. I'm going to say makeup. Maybe you were attracted to a color, and then you put it on your face, and you thought, "Oh no, that's not for me." But then you keep that lipstick because you know one day you want something in that color. It might be a cushion in your house. Yes, you know. And so it's like learning what you love. And I look back and I think the clothes that I've thrown away that I would love now to have made into a cushion. And it's yeah. just, you know, and you look back and you go, oh my God, that's who I was. I was actually acting out who I was when I made that purchase. I was yes. just leaning into who I am. Yes. And it, it's like, almost like now you look back and go, why didn't you just stick with that instead of going home and going, oh no, maybe I should have gone for beige. Yeah like everyone else <laughs> and I think that that's the real real value of this creative process is that again you're brilliant at remembering this and re yeah. re regurgitating it in the future for others to hear I can do that but I do mine in visuals so right. I can show you where I was in 2020 and this is you know a page so it doesn't always have to be you know this is a page in my sketchbook when I was on minimum wage and it's all about my fear of not having enough money to live on and then, you know, the sketchbook doesn't have to be a creative um, piece of art. There's another oh, was one. that done on that moment or has yeah. that been done afterwards on reflection? No, no. In that, that's my, it's like a diary. Right. I use okay. A diary. So this is a personal one. And then there's something here, which I noticed this was an interesting one. So this is, what dates this Sunday the 19th of April 2020 right so it's taken it this is going to save me a lot of paper because I write right 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 where I could just take something out of a magazine and stick it in and I remember exactly what I felt do you know yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's what you're doing you're saying that I've got the words which I would have thought I wasn't strong with words but I like it. And so it's, that's just, that's a bit of diary with a, with a image. And then there's other things like this is, you know, something I sent to somebody, sent a card. And then there's stuff that's like, this is a really simple way to write down words with a texture. Do you know those little prints, print yeah. packs you can get? So I just got some oh, fabric. Stencils. They're cool. Yeah. And just print it onto fabric and then put it in the book. But the point I'm making is that when you've got it in the book, at the time, it's giving you that freedom to express something, whatever word you have. 
whether it's positive or negative or questions. So you get it out into the into the universe. But then like this, it's 2022 now, isn't it? So that's two years ago. It's not as valuable now because I do remember that. But in 10, 15 years, I'll be oh, like, yes. what the hell? Oh, my God, yeah. Remember that time? And you and know what else is nice? There might be some really personal stuff that you wouldn't really want someone to read. So okay. it's still, it's still, instead of a diary, it's still a secret between you and you, isn't it? Absolutely. Which I is important. Agree. And I think it's, you know, and it's also just, so that's kind of something that I've done like a little... You know, I got some really good news oh. that day. And look, I don't want it to be made. It, it's this is so this is not So then I got offered. This is sort of cutting forward to interiors. But I'm just showing you how you don't need to be a professional in any capacity to do this. Look, I'm talking about journaling, really. It's journaling. Yes, it is. Yes, it's but, a creative journaling yeah. process yeah. that you're sharing. And I'm loving it because I oh. think sometimes I know clients struggle. I say to them, you know, you're going to it's. What I think you're doing actually is you're spending some time sitting in how you feel. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. Oh, you're very good at this, Claire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you spend, and then you acknowledge how you feel and you can decide, do I like feeling like this? Yes or no? Yep. Can I do anything about it? Right. What am I going to do about it? And you've got that pushing yourself from it instead of just bloody ignoring it and drowning that feeling and yeah. whether it's good or bad it's just sitting there with yourself acknowledging how you feel and, and it's lovely I love it I think there's also alongside all of that there's also the kind of manifestation part of it there's mm -hmm. the dreaming for the future there's the putting out who you feel you want to be and how you want your life to be at a different stage which it's is not why I asked about the minimum wage bit that's why I thought oh because for me, it's dreaming about where you want to go. And mm. it's hard for people to say, oh, well, you know, I'll be happy when I'm there. But it's you need a, to feel happy to get there, don't you? That's yeah, I think thing. it's a mix. I use it. So that minimum wage one was a day when I was just, just desolate in my mind. And for me, the way I can move past that is very personal. And I'm happy to share it is I tend to be fetal for a section of the day. Like I just go, it's okay, just go and just yes. feel fucking miserable feel it. yeah feel it yeah and then I get a bit bored or I get a bit hungry <laughs> and then I'll I'll then give myself the very minimal task for the day like the rest of the day of just doing one page in my book and that means that I've deposited I've banked it oh, I like it it's there it hasn't gone away but it doesn't belong to me anymore it belongs to the book and I can then turn over the cliche of the new page and have a new chapter. So what mm. I also want to then share is exactly what I'm about. So that's kind of that's kind of expressing how you are in the moment. Then the other version, which is not on the same day, another day or a different period of your life, when you want to dream and manifest. And I'll show you something. So I'm an interior stylist by trade, um, but you don't anybody can do this so this is I was getting a new flat so this is personal work this mm -hmm. is nothing to do with clients and uh, it was in furlough hence it's still in my book so I couldn't go shopping for new things for my flat so I just made some very simple oh nice so you know yes basically using imagery as we can all get from you know it's from L decoration or from living etc yes and it's and making it your own isn't it's it it's making it your own but that's very creative that's a different level of kind of actually then going out and finding inspiration which i would say is something you can get braver about but there's so many beautiful things out there that you just take and i think as an artist and a creator one of the most important things to accept and understand is that we always take inspiration from somewhere Oh, yes. No human being invents everything. Nah. The only person, thing, entity, being, who knows, is the the greater being that we all have different opinions. Don't you of. think I think of that as we're playing a game of yes and? 
Yeah. So we're kind of standing on the shoulders of and we're saying yes. yes and. Exactly right. Yeah. So again, in terms of starting those first few pages, which aren't necessarily about um, looking inward, but looking outward, then go and get stuff that's already been done. Go and get a magazine, go and get a book, go and take, you know, get some photos from somewhere that you've got in a shoebox. You know, it's not about starting from scratch on, I'm talking about on your ground now in your book, you know, just basically take whatever it is and then you can just add to it just add a little smiley face or add a bit of ribbon from a present you've got in a present drawer add a bit of wrapping paper that you think the colors would look nice together so again it's a very gentle way of acknowledging you know none of these pictures are my that I showed you you know none of those are my work no but it's inspiration isn't it and it's a nice thing and it's kind of like saying imagine if you did have a genie pop up yeah. What is it that you want? Do you even know? Because sometimes you don't know if one was sitting there with the minimum wage when there's no clients. Yeah. And yeah. You're sitting there and you think, what's the point in dreaming? Because there's not, no, you know, well, no, that is exactly the time when you should be dreaming, isn't it? And yeah. just say, yeah. well, what would you? I say that, what would you spend the money on? What would yeah. you spend that on? What would you ch exchange that energy for? What would yes. you rather have? What would you Absolutely. have instead? Yes. Because that in itself is like pulling you out of something, isn't it? It's I agree. You, you know, and it's it's nice to dream. Yeah, uh, and I think it's, again, it's a very, with a page of a notebook or a sketchbook, it's a really, it, the page is, is defined for you. It's really good. So you can do one page where you're sitting in your worries or your fears or your upsets or your disappointments. And then you turn the page. Again, it's a cliche, but it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. You turn the page and then you say, right, now I'm going to look forward. What is it I want? What, mm -hmm. as you say, if the genie came, what would be my, you know, aspiration? And then you've got two, both elements and they both can, you know, be realistic yes. um, in terms of expressing yourself. So, yeah. And do I you think, think as well there's value in looking at, like, I have a habit tracker is the, it, in my book and it's looking at what is the feeling that you're feeling before you, you know, you, you, you go downhill, whether that's drinking or whether it's eating or, you know, sending messages to people who you wish you were and sending messages right. to what is the feeling that you're feeling and I do that on the habit tracker so if you have a, a few pages of discontent and you have you know you go back through it when the motions left the room you might find that this pattern is your job this pattern yeah. is your relationship this yeah. pattern is your health and then you know which area to focus on absolutely Absolutely. And I think I've I've had periods of psychotherapy in my time. I had a breakup after 20 years of marriage, went through a very difficult time, which you can see minimum wage and, you know, a dark time in my life. And it was very interesting working with a psychotherapist. She was just she found the work that I was doing independently, creatively, so incredibly helpful to be able to then have the conversation such as you've just had, i.e. let's look at the patterns here. Let's look at what it is that keeps reoccurring. You know, what are the days or the times? What are the, what are the, what are the habits? That's the best word that you've used, you know? And I think it's very interesting that she said, you know, Sarah, you're, you're a relatively unusual client because you're so creative. Not everybody is, but ultimately this is a process that I wish everybody could yeah it's a solution it's so valuable focused. it's solution yeah. focused but tell me where did that come from I mean did that come from your childhood is that something that you train for in your career what you being know, a know, creative yeah is that just something that's in you yeah I think it's innate and I've done a lot of work this year on my why and I think if I share that it will help give a framework for my creativity. And I spent much longer than I expected trying to understand my why and my purpose because my business is growing really well, but I wanted to understand the meaning for it as opposed to just helping the specific clients and earning the particular money. And I thought that getting your why would be quite easy. I thought it'd be a matter of sort of sitting down with, I was doing it with a group of three very, very trusted professional friends. And I thought it would take us kind of a couple of hours with each other to sort of battle it out and work it out and talk it through. Oh my goodness, it's taken me months because there's so much, it's very hard to find a simplicity in life, I think. And you might be able to glean that my head is pretty sort of, <laughs> you know and to cut through 
that and create a why which relates to me as a very small child right the way through to who I want to be when I'm 99 I found very hard anyway here you, we you go. went very deep you I went did go deep, very deep. Didn't you? I went somebody very else deep. would just go oh my kids that'll do yeah no this is about who I am in theory but it's also got to be accessible for everybody do you know what I mean like it's, right. got, it's not it's not got to be some point you know I started off with a lot of whether you know cr creative um recognition of my inner self and it's just like oh well yes but it's not I wouldn't have said that when I was six no right so I'm just contextualizing it so my why is I believe in making friends with people who value creativity so that together we can share and inspire others wow that's my why. And that's what I'm doing now is I'm because sharing. It's, yeah, and it's who you want to spend your time with, isn't it? Exactly. So say that it again, on. say it again. So we're going to unpick it. Making okay. friends with... So I believe, that's really important, I believe in making friends with people who value creativity so that together we can share and inspire others. Mm -hmm. Because for me, friend. making friends <laughs> is really important. I'm here to make a friend. You know, I've made friends with you, Claire. That's my business ethos. I'm not yeah. here to make business connections. I'm here to make friends, you know. But I need someone who's my friend, values creativity. Psychotherapists. <laughs> she values it, you know. Yeah, so they see it, they see so. What does it look like when someone doesn't value your creativity? If she, if my listeners, my clients or whoever in the future listens to this, if she's sitting there and she says, I wish I could be around people who value my creativity. What does it look like when, when you're experiencing people not valuing your creativity? I think it's not, it's not my creativity. This is splitting hairs, but my why is not valuing my creativity is who value creativity as uh, as a phenomenon so it's not about them valuing me at all it's about them valuing creativity so if I met someone who really had no connection in terms of having any value or understanding of any creative forms we're talking music we're talking art we're talking fashion we're talking um tv documentaries we're talking acting we're talking you know if there's nothing that resonates for them then I'd find it quite hard to make a conversation that I felt we connected on because I think genuinely every human being has creativity within them yeah and it's so it's the label creativity isn't it I think it's recognizing that it is creativity like any idea isn't it if yes. you see something and Absolutely. you value you you know like I walk into even somewhere like Weatherspoons and I'm just yes. amazed at how they've put the things together like and I value that. I yes, value absolutely. the space that I'm in and that people yes. have gone to the trouble of putting yes. nice lights on the walls. Yes. But but not everybody would call that creativity. Would no, they? I think there's also, for example, something just sprung to mind because you said um, Weatherspoons. <laughs> yeah, but creativity could be that you walk into your kitchen and you're going to cook something and you go, oh, I'm going to follow a recipe because I'm not that confident. I'm not, you know, so you're going to follow a recipe for, I don't know, let's call it, um, spaghetti carbonara or something or spaghetti bolognese something sort of straightforward and you're following the recipe and then you think oh do you know what apart from the tin of tomatoes I've got a fresh tomato I could probably chop that up and put it in that's oh, yeah. you having an idea that is creativity this isn't just about the visual arts it's about the mind it's yes, about an it's, idea yes and it, I would also call it being resourceful yep. mothers are dripping with this aren't they we're resourceful Absolutely. but we don't value it and it's looking at that as a you value that look the psychotherapist has explained that it's that people who have that are more able to heal themselves yes. like let's let's recognize it if you've got that Yep. And it's not about, oh, I'm good at nothing and I'm I, I'm not creative. I couldn't paint a picture. It's, you know, you can make the, connect those dots, is it not? Is it connecting the, the dots as well? Yeah, and I think it's finding creativity in all the places you are. So it can be just that you pick a leaf up off the ground when you're out on a walk in autumn and you just admire the colour. 
you know, that's a creative process. I think let's get away from the word creative. And I'm the one that brought it to the party. So <laughs> don't get me wrong here. But, you know, let's talk about imagination. Mm-hmm. That's equally in line with what I'm talking about. Because I think... isn't it a different part of your brain? Because you, can you be creative and anxious at the same time, do you think? Yes, I think so. I think you so, could be anxious with anything, can't you? Well, yeah, because I suppose, yeah. But when you're lost in that creativity, when you acknowledge that it's you and you're, you can't get it wrong, I mean. Yeah. Well, it's like a little bridge, isn't it? You can be anxious yeah. going, oh, I don't want to touch it, I don't want to break it. But then once you're in it, you yeah. kind of lose, you kind of get it wrong. So it's, it's about taking that step. Yeah. And, and that's-, that's the magic. That's the magic. And I was an actress, professional actress for 10 years. And I think one of the most amazing things about that process is that I can genuinely say, certainly not on television, but on the theatre, on, on the stage, you know, when you're doing a good performance because you watch yourself. It's the most bizarre right. thing. You literally are watching yourself, saying the lines, doing the work, engaging with the character, you know, changing every night because you have to keep it fresh and you're so lost your brain is so committed to what you're doing that you're actually able to watch yourself and I think that's really interesting it's a bit bizarre but I think that 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 the human brain and creativity and imagination and when I'm working in deep creativity or sort of imaginative work with clients the magic bit and we've all had this we've all had this in different ways is when you lose track of time and you go oh my god that was an hour and a half no wonder I need a wee (laughs) and that's the magic of losing oneself in a creative or an imaginative process because the thing that's important is there isn't an outcome that's needed I imagine that you would walk uh, yes. somebody through the process of seeing you decide who are you. 100%. Now I'm helping clients. So a hundred percent, that's my passion is making and creating a space that reflects you. Yeah. Is you and, and different parts of you because you've got more than one space. And we all know that there isn't one look of Claire. If you think about your wardrobe, you know, you could have a signature style but you wear different things on different days in different yes, ways. and that's permission to, you see, and that's something. It's not changing your mind. No. It's you've got loads of different sides of your personality and you want to express all of them. Exactly. Sometimes all on the same day, which was what my mother used to go mad about because I used to get changed about yeah. nine times every day when I was little. Exactly. <laughs> and that's... Not anymore. Yeah. Now. <laughs> nice trail of clothing along the... Mine was the same. But I think with my clients, what I love doing is basically getting to know them. That's the first part is finding your style. And I often say to people, genuinely, most of the people I work with come to me because they need help. Um, they might have some ideas, but generally most people are like, I don't, I'm not sure what to do. And I'm not, they're quite in a very different way. So what I do in terms of finding your style, which is a step in my process. So it's probably step two step one is just meeting and seeing if there's a spark between us as people nothing to do with design or nothing to do with your house but just like do we actually connect I call it a design date because at the end of the day if we're going to spend time together let's make sure we really like each other and let's make sure that what I offer and how I communicate is something you feel excited about and if you don't I get it go and meet other designers too I always say that please I want my clients to choose me Do they usually come to you because they want the whole house or is it usually sometimes just one space? Like talk me through, sorry. So could you talk me through the process from a client approaching you and what it is that you do? Yeah, so the first step, like you have a first step is my design date where we have a Zoom like this or I meet them in person if they live around the Bristol or London or Oxford areas where I work on the ground. And we have a chat and we just see if we like the, the the cut of each other's jib. And prior to that, I asked for a couple of pictures of the space that you want help with and a couple of pictures, if you've got them, but no problem if you haven't, of anything you're aspiring to. So I can link the two together. Um, but it's genuine, genuinely just a very chilled conversation. Um, And then we have a more in-depth design meeting where we look at the information together, if you want to go ahead. And then I start the design discovery process where 
I'm not asking you what you want in your room. I, that's completely overwhelming. I mean, do you want this or do you want that? I mean, no, 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 no. We start right at the big basics. So I'll be like, can you send me a picture of some of your favorite clothes? Can you show me a picture of this, that, and the other? And then I also, because it's my job to provide it all, we have an online portal, so we don't have to do it all on Zoom. I send you about 12 or 15 boards. Um, I say boards, they're just images. And on there, there's pictures of stuff and you just say what you like and what you don't like some of the pictures are colors some of them are textures some of them are flowers some of them are actual specific rooms and it's just like you can take a day you can take a week you know to go through it at your leisure and you say what you like you don't have to say why you can or you you can say what you don't like as well oh my god I can't bear that and I ask if possible to give some sort of instinctive reason. So like, I can't bear that flower because it reminds me of my auntie's dress that she made me wore, wear when I got, you know, when I went to her wedding or something. It's like a, uh, uh. or, oh my God, I absolutely school love uniform. that. I love, hey? green. Yeah. I love green, but it's some, it reminds me of school uniform. So yeah. I don't want to wear it. Yeah, it's so like that's not going to be a color that we're going to work with, you know. So I kind of get you to respond. I give you things, but it's very relaxed because you do it on your own at home. But you can also respond and it's very nebulous. It's not like, this is the colour I'm thinking of for your bedroom. No, it's like, what do you think of this picture? Oh, I love it. What do you think of that picture? Oh, yeah, it's great. Or I love that room, but I can't bear that picture or that headboard's a bit warm, you know. So it's just a fun kind of way for you to express your instincts there's you no right know yourself as well isn't yeah. it really there's no right there's no wrong and there's no analytics needed i i do that afterwards yeah so, but you just go with the flow you know and also what i say is anything you say yes to isn't something that you're going to have yeah you have to be careful of that around my mom at christmas if you say <laughs> you like anything you get and then <laughs> I like it. oh don't want christmas <laughs> So again, there's no, you're not making any decisions at this stage. You're just giving me your gut instincts with your wow. eyes. Mm -hmm. So then what I do is I'll go away and I'll look at your things and then I'll define some more, maybe another five boards, which are a bit more specific to sort of see what you think about something in, in more context. So I'll, I'll have had a look at it. Okay, so she's kind of into those sort of tones. So let's give more, just a little bit deeper, deeper, deeper. And then what I do is I go through and, and, and collate it all and look at it. And it's really interesting. And then I'll show you, I'll go, do you know what? These are the ones you really like. Can uh -huh. you see that you're very much aiming towards the kind of oranges and yellowy sorts of flavors, sorts of feelings. Mm -hmm. And actually you really like geometrics more than you like a kind of an organic, squirrel or whatever so then you're quite interested because you're yeah. like oh I didn't even realize and actually in my room I've got a cushion that I love you and look I'm like, around you and yeah. uh -huh. like, oh show me show me show me and then we get into a quite an yeah. exciting state of delivering and discovering and unlayering things about you and about your past and the other really important thing that I come on to which I love and is partly my favorite is the memories that you have that you feel are important and the memories of items so perhaps you've got a letter that you've kept from your granny or perhaps you've got a bit of embroidery on a tapestry that um oh I think my Alexa went off for some reason um I've got like a little stool that my granny did a tapestry on and I love that you know what are the things that you would grab in a fire and you ran out of the house that are that are memories that are physical items um, or what's your favorite jumper and why, you know, so I kind of get into the nostalgic part of you that you cannot buy in a shop. Because for me, it's also when I'm doing up somebody's home, it, it can be done from scratch as a brand new building, but most people I work with are generally my sort of age and they've had a life. They've got memories. Yes, we've got stuff we want to share and display. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I never felt I had permission to do that and for some reason until I moved here. Yeah. But it, which is interestingly when I had stopped drinking and I started yeah. leaning into who I really was and yeah. not needing to fit in. Yes. And it's a matter of sort of celebrating those elements and ensuring that, you know, I feel that an interior that works should feel like a blanket. You put it on and you just feel mm. safe in it. 
and you feel all the lovely things that are, that a lovely blanket makes you feel. And part of that is having familiarity. And so it's not about delivering a scheme that's all brand new and shiny, although we can, if that's what you yeah. want. It's about bringing you into your space in a visual way. Um, what if you don't think this is your forever home, though? What if you're always feeling like this is lovely, but this isn't it? So you kind of nearly don't put your, you don't go there with your full stamp because you don't feel like this is it. But then I think in right. that respect, because I work with people that live in rental homes as well. Yeah, it's like you, you take support. it with you, don't you? It's, it's, it's actually yeah. just, ex I think the way, the process you've given me today is much more about me as a person. And I think I, it's even so much as connecting those dots because you're close, right? It, we'll have, it's, it's, such, it's a lot about permission. One yeah. of my um, affirmations is, it's persistence that's required, not permission. Yes. It's persistence in what it is that you want, like not permission from other people yes. because that's about what they want. Completely and, agree. And Completely. I've been in a relationship where it's not just been about, you know, thinking about the environment. It's even comes the closest to what I wear, the yeah. clothes that I wear. Yeah. And once you've been in that position and someone's criticized or questioned or controlled, let's say controlled, that part of your personality, it's really hard to know yourself and to give yourself that permission, yourself that permission again, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And, and sometimes you go there with your clothes because it's not as permanent. You can go home and change it, can't you? Yep. Absolutely. But your home, if you're spending a lot of money, it feels like, what if I get it wrong? Yeah. And I think that's where my skill helps because my skill is to help you see that lots of things that we do together are not permanent they are like a kaleidoscopic view of you and items that I'll put in one room can be transferred or translated to another room you can move things around it's not like an image that has to stay where it is because the lamps you don't choose you, don't you, you think love you know. It makes you deeper person about who you are because I have got, it's really funny, I smiled when you said about the, the things from your grandma. I've got postcards that my grandma sent to my granddad and vice yeah. versa during the war, lace embroidered postcards, yeah. and they should be on display. I should have them framed, they should be somewhere. And I just, I feel like putting myself in the position of going to the trouble of doing that, like you say, with my clear white table that's what I would be doing I'd be looking at that I'd be looking at me ancestry I'd be remembering my my people and it would yeah. give me permission to be who I am Absolutely. and every time I walk past it on the wall it would give me that it's more than just about but I get to take that with us to the forever home and what I would suggest if we were having this conversation I get goosebumpy because I'm trained as a textile designer so absolutely yes have it framed and put it on the wall but I would do something much That's more fair innovative oh can you show it to me yeah, lovely because i've got a lovely idea for it or for them this is my box oh i've got one of those boxes this is my box and it's got bits and pieces i can't tell you but this is just like a client meeting for me this is i don't even like saying a client meeting this is like a get together chat i go we have a conversation and then they go oh i've got something and i go go and get it go and get it and then they have a rummage around exactly like claire's doing you're absolutely like the perfect person to show but this is how i work it's very organic it's just a chat you know but i want you to be excited about finding this precious precious item that you've got and then i can explain how we could do something special with it it's so should i tell you what i would do with your go item on then. go on okay. then. Go on, so I, basically, I would take um <laughs> oh amazing oh, amazing. it's like lace oh look at the writing on the back yeah it's so like what i would do is i would take photographs of both sides of that beautiful and beautiful work to my what does it say to my dear wife and it's oh, like it's beautiful in the from it says from somewhere in france it's so romantic the way you know i was laughing i thought it, one day someone will find a mobile phone it'll switch it on and it'll be like yeah how are you yeah it says, loving you always my dearest love a card hoping it finds you in the best of health and spirits 
I'm keeping tops, only hanging on so much to see you. I'm thinking so much of you every day. I've received three letters from you, honey. Hope to be able to answer them tomorrow. So all the best, darling. And um, chin up from your darling husband, Fred. Oh. In France. So what I would do, because that is beyond delicious. 1944. Amazing. I would, I basically, I've done this on postcards in the past. I take pictures and I turn that into a fabric with that oh, image on. Dear. Yeah. Because there's make, not. The, yeah. The, oh. I turn it into a fabric and then you put it onto cushions and have the front of the postcard on the front and the back of the postcard on the back with the writing. That's what I do in my work. Or I put it onto a chair cover or, you know, we can, or I make it tiny and make it into repeat pattern. So it's not so obvious, but when you look at it, you know what it is. Or I make it into a fabric panel that you can put on the wall. Yeah. And exactly. I showed you this. I showed yeah, you this. I love that. that. I love that. Yeah. We won't go that glitzy with this. This is for a different thing. Different it would style. Look, but it, it would look <laughs> exactly the same. I wouldn't mess with it. It would be that exact. Oh. Yeah, that exact. Because yeah. I was thinking I could get some of them white box frames from Ikea. Uh -huh. And put them in. And then I was thinking about, you know, the coffee tables with the things inside. And I just couldn't, I mm. couldn't find a way. But that's perfect. Because I get to lovely, keep these. Yeah, you keep those. Yeah. But what's also lovely about it being on fabric is it's a tactile material. Yes. So you can hug it or hold it or lean on it. Or it becomes a part of something soft and part of your... Your you could make it into a throw, phone. couldn't you? You yeah, could have like absolutely. a patchwork throw with all absolutely. of the letters. Yeah, there's a million ways. So that's what I do as a designer within all the schemes I work with. Look clients, at the writing. Have, yeah, the writing. Right. Yeah. It's just beautiful. I'll have to send you so you can cut in a couple of images of the work I've done like that and you can see how this isn't just an idea. This is a process I use. Wow. Thank you so much for giving yeah. up, sharing those ideas. And isn't yeah. that wonderful? We'll not do the same with my school reports, though. We'll not. No, that's not. Well, they're actually my dad's <laughs> school reports. Are you sentimental? Do you hang on to all these things? My mother had a blitz when she got to this age, when she was menopausal, I think, and she just gave it all to me. And at wow. the time, I had a big house with a big yes. loft. Yes. And now I don't have that space, and it feels like a sense of responsibility on me. Mm. Like, because my dad has died, my brother. He's got sons, so eventually somebody's going to, you know, I want to pass it on and I've yeah. got sons. It just feels like a lot of responsibility that I, I'm not maybe ready for or something. Yeah, I think it's about editing. I'm looking for the grown-up. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm your... <laughs> Yeah, I think it's about editing and doing what you've done exactly, keeping it in a box which is manageable and containable and dry and safe. But then, you know, I would also, on a practical level, I would digitally photograph it so that yes. if something happened, then you you haven't lost it forever. But I did this with his and my mother's. I should have done the same what you'd said. He, his mum had loads of paintings. She went through a phase of painting and she had stored them in the loft. And she showed me them and I said, the colours are beautiful. I said, we'll have to frame them. In this house here where we live was always intended to be a holiday home, uh -huh. which is why I said this might not be our forever home. And I thought, well, because we've come back to Wales, it feels like I want to make a nod to where we are and everything and his mum. And so I said, well, we'll frame them and put them on the walls here. So we've got all of yeah. these pictures. Yeah. And it looks lovely because they're, they're painted by somebody who we know instead of yeah. just going to... Absolutely. I mean, obviously, I've paid for the frames, but instead of having to pay for complete paintings, it's yeah. it means something that nice, that unusual. Um, and the colours match perfectly with the Brilliant. outdoors, so it's yeah. nice. And that's the point that I would pick up on from what you said, where I'm turning the tables now and I'm being the analyst, you know, the yes. analyst one. But you said it matters because it means something. That's the it, point. Mm -hmm. It should mm -hmm. your home should mean something because it's your safe space. It's your home is where you are yourself with no pretense to anybody else because no one's watching you. No one's engaging with you in your home unless you invite them in, of course. But ultimately, that's where we are, our absolute baseline self in all its different capacities. And so for that space to not reflect you or mean anything to you, I think that can feel like you're not quite connected 
so that's what I attempt to do with my design work is help my clients feel really connected to their space because it's powerful Mm -hmm. and it's with your thing so whether you're renting or you're owning you take that with you don't you it's a process that you're actually going through it's an internal process isn't it that you're shown on the outside I think that's that's the best way to describe it so it's not specific to this home if I move on I take all these things with me and the other part of the process which is really lovely is genuinely I always have a really fabulous time with my clients because they're brilliant people so the process that we've been through together is something that they also can reflect on and remember when they look at a certain thing or they feel a certain way in the space it's like oh yeah that was what we did and we had that conversation with Sarah do you remember we had that laugh but you know just but it's very subtle they're not literally thinking that when they're looking around but it's a layer yes to the process and a sense of pride because something I'd really like to pick up on that you said is for me I'm a guide and I take their hand and I take them through and for me a bit like a teacher my job really is done when I say to someone so I think you can probably do the spare room on your own now can't you but I'm there here if you need me you know I'm imparting knowledge and information and giving you back what it is that you need to understand to have some confidence to have some understanding to have some ideas and to have a process that you can replicate And that to me is the most important element is the sharing of the knowledge and the sharing of ideas and the sharing of a process to give you the client confidence to be able to do it on your own and pleasure in the fact that you've achieved it. Yeah, I think it does all boil down to confidence, doesn't it? It's clarity on what you want, clarity on, you know, what you enjoy, what you, how you want to feel. In asking you the the questions that you ask, like asking people to make the decisions, I think is a process in itself. Yeah. You know, I'd say do that when you feel good, when you're feeling lit up and you're excited. Yeah. Um, Another thing that you said that I picked up on, like you're taking notes, I take them sort of hourly, (laughs) is um, persistence. And I completely agree with that. I think persistence and perseverance, if you want to get somewhere, because just to circle back on that bit of information about be, you know, being on minimum wage, I was working in a motability scooter company in Bristol, had a headset on nine to five. I mean, I friggin' hated it, but I wasn't successful in my textile business. I got divorced. All the sort of midlife slip ups happened to me and I ended up in a very difficult place I wouldn't say it was just a dark place I had dark moments um so I had to go out and get a full-time job for the first time ever since being an actress and a textile designer Mm -hmm. you know and it was very humiliating but I think humility is a great asset and to learn that we're all fallible and we're all fragile is one of the things that later in life we get to understand we're all invincible when we're 20 odd aren't we and we're all you know Mm -hmm normal in the 30s if you have children etc but ultimately I think what I would say is that having come through that process it took me about 80 months and I've gone with a business with no clients to a business which is very busy I'm booked up until the you know till Easter next year and I love my work and it's that persistence and I think that in a funny way Claire it's very much like that's what I've realized is my true value is helping other people achieve in that way So I've set up a group for other creative and artists who want to meet other interior designers to collaborate and share ideas. And actually, that is a legacy that I can build very, very, very slowly over the next 10 years, because in the way that your work helps people define a new version of themselves, this work with other creatives and other designers and other people who just have that thought. So I've always loved interior design. Mm. I'd love to have a go at it. And it's like, come on then, it's fine. I'm bloody 54. I started this two years ago, you know. Doesn't mean it's going to be your new job. Yeah, Doesn't fine. mean that you're going to be locked into something massive, but come and see what I'm doing. If you like it, hang around. If you don't, pop off somewhere else. But there's a space here that isn't just about working with me as a client for a job. 
You know, I've got another place now where I'm interacting with lots of different people who are either just really into interior design and love sort of watching those kind of programs on telly and want to see my design diary every week where I'm really honest or people who are like, you know what, I make lampshades and I've got a little thing and I do, you know, but I don't know how to get them to market. I, I'd love an interior designer to use them. I'm like, come in, come and meet my friends, come and meet my people, come and collaborate, because for me, Persistence and collaboration were what built my business. And I've gone from nothing to something that's, um, you know, three three figures, I think is the term, isn't it? In wow, 18. well done. That's I just huge. want to share that. It's not about working with me as a client, really. I'd, I'd love that, of course. But for me, the excitement at the moment is about creating a safe, creative space where people can, and it's not about interacting with me, I'm the, I'm the catalyst, but it's about the communication, the conversations, the collaborations that come off the back of it. That's what interests me. It's like having my own party where I just get to invite brilliant people along and I want them all to be chatting and making connections and basically growing their creative businesses. Wow, that's amazing. And what does that look like, Sarah? Then is that you getting together? Like, did you say like on a Facebook group? Is it like a community it's similar. or hat bike? Yeah, it's similar to a Facebook group, but I've decided to come off not permanently, but I've come away from Facebook. Right. Because it's something, this is the slight rebel in me. Yeah, because um, you don't Facebook. own it. That's the worry, No, you it? don't own it. And I find I put things out and I've got about, two, it's only tiny, I've got about 200 people in my group. Brilliant. But 10% of the people that, uh, see it. You know, 90% of people don't see what we put on Facebook or Instagram. And so I've gone on to Patreon, which is a creative platform for artists. It's all part of my... I've caught a, a new kind of um, space and it's called the Burkhard Design Assemblage. And so what I'm doing is going on there and I've kept the paywall really minimal because in effect, I want it to be like Instagram and Facebook, but I want it to be somewhere that has direct communication with people who said, yes, I'm here and I want to listen. So for my design diaries, you can come in and it's like a pound a month and you get to see my blabbing on on projects and doing this today and that today and oh my god the guy hasn't turned up to fit the glass and, blah, 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 and I'm going to use this color blah, blah, blah. that's once a week I do an update and I give um trade discounts as well because I have a lot of people in the in the in the trade who who give me discounts and then the other stage which is for professionals or people who want to circulate in that creative um industry is creative collaborations and that's 10 pounds a month and in that space you get to watch or participate or become a guest member on design discussions which are held on zoom or in real life so I've got one on Thursday in London um, I'm talking to a specialist in branding your creative business and then on Friday I'm doing a live one on zoom a design discussion all about high-end luxury interiors no. not because I'm in them I'm not in that world but I've got people I know who are and I just think people are really interested it's like oh what's well, it like to work that, with millions yeah. of pounds in your budget um, and then yes yeah, so if you come into that group then basically you get to see those discussions a bit like we're doing now that they're, they're recorded um, or you get to be a part of it and then I'm going to be doing an in live event uh, in life once a quarter maybe exhibition visits I don't know it's going to unfold as yeah time goes just on. as you go as, as, as it comes out well exactly. done. good yeah. for you yeah but it's about reaching people that you wouldn't normally reach isn't it it is and it is about gaining that level of commitment from people because you're right you can have a free group and people click the button and you think that they're there and they're interested but actually there's no level of commitment from them no so it's really and that's not that's not to say that obviously people are busy, the world is yeah. so noisy, isn't it? But yeah. it's like to say, who's here? Who wants to have this conversation? Yeah. No? Exactly. Um, I it, think it's, it's just opening a different door as well, because we've all got a home, we've all got a bedroom, we've all got a kitchen, we've all got a lounge. We're all like to feel good in what environment. Yeah. So it's kind of like, if you want to invest in that, it's investing in that knowledge, but also investing in that is your interest isn't it yeah, exactly that's who exactly. you are and then if you're introducing yourself to someone, oh what do you do who are you you have your job but this is something that yes. you're interested in and it's just a knowledge yeah. it's where you'd find i always say where would you find yourself if you were locked overnight in a library like you're not tired so you've got to be awake which yeah. department are you in yeah 
Yeah, great question. Yeah. You know, interiors, creative, like yeah. creating spaces, like that's the that's what it sounds like. You're pulling them together, and people will know if it's for them. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> it's also about products because people, you know, I'm a big believer in supporting the maker the creator the small person who lives locally to you who makes incredible artwork the person that makes textiles who's you know possibly down the road who you've never met before somebody that I know who would do something that would be really special just for you and these people are kind of bespoke and interesting and quirky but they're not necessarily that expensive you just have just met pick, them yeah instead of just picking something up off the shelf that everybody exactly. else could have right exactly. so it's and like you said, we don't, you know, we're saying people might be short of time, but you can be giving them that inspiration. Mm. And often it's like when you go shopping with someone else and they go, this will look nice on you. Yes. And you go, really? Yeah. I wouldn't have chose that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You trust, trust each other. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. well done. And it's, it's going to light you up if you're going to be surrounding yourself with other people who are interested in that. So that's right. It's creating your own version of a community that's interested in growing together. That's the point. It's growing together in all different ways, friendships, business connections, um, creative collaborations, or just I'm really happy because it's um, a very sort of separate. I'm very happy for people to just be nosy. I'm like you sit because it's a because it's a separate platform the joy for patreon for me is that i don't need to say give me a like could you share could you do this could you no you're paying a pound you're in you can just sit and watch i don't you will see what i show you if you want to look at it but you don't need to participate like you do on facebook for it to go to more people it goes to my people anyway and i feel that that sort of disingenuous communication on social media is something i'm becoming less and less comfortable with you know right. like, let's do a dance and a silly song so that the algorithm shows what i'm doing to people who've said they want to see it but i don't no, want I think, to do a silly dance on oh, no, i think it's just if you if you if that's if that's I think it's more about just be who you are, isn't it? It's being yeah, but who you that's, are. <laughs> but you can't, on the algorithm, you won't get seen because you're no. not playing their game. You're not doing what they want you to do. And that hasn't been a problem. But I think this year, a lot of creatives are finding that. So I know people who make pottery, beautiful pottery, silversmiths, all sorts of creative arts. And in the past on Instagram or Facebook, for them to put just a picture of their work up was enough. It would be seen. Now, if they just put a picture of a beautiful pot up, it's not enough. They've got to do a reel with them moving and you, you know what I mean? Otherwise, it doesn't get shared. Right. I see what you mean. So it's getting harder and harder. That's what I mean. It's getting noisier, isn't it? And noisier. Yeah. And you're right, because it can be, it can feel exhausting for, yeah. for the people who are on our side of it. But I'm thinking about, you know, like, the client or whoever's just like on the scroll, isn't it? It's kind of like, come and look over here. Come yeah. and look at this is what you could do instead. But we're all in control of what's on our newsfeed. You know, you know, I say that when people move into this world, it's like, right, get out, just close down people who are making you feel triggered. Yeah. And instead, join some groups, things that you're interested Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And from here, I have clients who say, Claire, I love what you do, but it's so noisy. So I send them to YouTube. Yes. But it could be at this stage that the goal, well, actually, I'm interested in that. That is something I'm self-selecting. Yes. It, it would Patreon be like an app on your phone in a similar way that Facebook would. So you would sit down with a cup of tea and say, oh, let's see what's today. I'm going to look at me in TV as today. Yes. Look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's an app that you have on your on your book but or on your phone, rather, which you have. Your, so Patreon comes from Patreon of the Arts. So it's basically there's lots of creators on there. And by being a Patreon, you're helping an artist or a creator provide something that they wouldn't normally do. So with me, I'm creating a space that encourages young, less experienced designers and artists and makers. It's self-funding, if you like. And basically, you also get an email that says, oh, there's a new post so you can see yeah, it and turn, yeah. yeah and yeah basically it means that you go into that space and you're not distracted by the other spaces but what matters is that when you go in there everything that's already been posted is there for you to look at if you want to you know whereas if you go onto Facebook or Instagram everything that was posted last night has disappeared 
<laughs> let alone last week you know exactly. so it's about having those conversations and those recorded discussions and that signposting for different courses I've done a lot of creative courses courses over the last 10 years I want to signpost people to them because they really helped me you know so it's having that information there in a place that's like you said a bit more quiet and it's a bit more like the library you used it's like this is my section of the library come in you know and if you want to be here brilliant I'll still be on Facebook I love Facebook because I love seeing what other people are doing and being social and being communicative I love being on Instagram for the same reason but in terms of putting my own output out there it's not so rewarding yeah and I think it works perfectly with this because Susie's scrolling on Facebook. She's not taking any notice of what you're doing. She's not taking any notice. Even Ollie, Ollie's still kind of like looking around what's going on. Bessie's got her head turned. It's here. It's when yes. I'm saying to her, what else are you interested yes. in? And why are you not doing something about it? Absolutely. Engaging in things that make you feel great and change and the dynamic generic. of your life you know but what you're doing is very generic she doesn't need to decide that she wants to make a cushion to come no. to you you know she, it can just be oh i'm just gonna be inspired i'm just gonna take one off but does she have to sign up for this 10 pound from day one or can can she get a bit of your first apart from this interview is, um, is there anything else that we're going to give her before that um, yeah, she can sign up for a pound and join my <laughs> um, design diaries. Or she can look at me on Instagram and Facebook, right. where I still am. She yes, can go on to my well. card Design Assemblage HQ, which is online on my website. And there's loads of information there. That's what we want. That's where we wanted to yeah. know where to And there's it. lots of information there about people I work with and projects I've done. It's not... So my website certainly is somewhere that people could come if they wish to work with me. There's projects and there's information about pricing, but that's not the focus. The focus focus is that it's a creative space to give you inspiration and show you how I work as a person that connects other people so I would say if someone just wants to have a sniff around and see what I'm about my Burkhard Design Assemblage website is definitely and that goes live on Friday actually it's been a year in the making wow and who's doing that for you have you been doing it yourself or how have you done it I've worked with a woman called Nikki James, right. who works with um, helping creative businesses. I become... think I've just read Nikki's book. Is this Nikki James's book? Yes. I think I've just read her book. Yeah. Well, that's who I'm collaborating with. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. And so your website's live on Friday. Yes. Get in. I know. I'm very excited. Yeah. And the membership goes live on Friday as well. So it's all coming together. So perfect timing for people to go and have a look at the website. And if they want more, if they're saying, yes, I'm going to commit to this, it's not much a pound, is it? They can commit the pound. And then if they want more again, you know, yeah. to up, up level and get yeah, a yeah, space yeah. At the, around that white table. Exactly. Come and join us. Ah. Come and join us. But yeah, most importantly, is it's accessible for everybody. It's, I mean, what I like to say is it's not cheap and cheerful. You know, a pound is there for a very good reason. A, I pay for the platform. B, 10% of everything I do in my work goes to my charity Room to Room, which supports homelessness. Oh, and thirdly, about that. yeah, well, thirdly, though, I think a pound a month is not very much. But I would say if you're really, count, you know, counting your pennies or you're 14, a pound is a lot. Or if you live in another country, I used to live in Asia, in Jakarta, a pound is a lot. So I really want it, rather than being cheap and cheerful, it's actually affordable and inclusive. And that will always be at that level. I will never put that up unless the platform puts it up. It might go up to pound twenty-five or something. But for me, that's really a very important ethic within my work, which is that people can come and see what I'm doing on a real level without it being a fancy pants interior design budget that you're working with. That's my clients and it does cost money for very good reason for what they get. But I want to work now with people who are just wanting to have a taste, have a feel, dip their toe in. And I don't want the financial element to be prohibitive to anybody. Wow. Because I tend to attract a lot of ladies with property, with whether that be their own holiday homes or, you know, by the let or you know and properties are so um like well they're flexible aren't they you can dress them for different reasons yeah. you can dress it to sell it you can dress it so the value that you're going to get from learning this is a skill in your own right and just yeah. 
instead of it just being something you're interested in to actually spend some time spend yes. some time spend of your your time and your energy like exploring it and it might it could lead to more things couldn't yeah. it you don't know and I'm, I'm thinking about your process with the five stages and I'm going to suggest another little exercise to help anyone that's listening, which is when you've done the great um, suggestion you have, Claire, of tidying up your purse or tidying your sock drawer or your knicker drawer or whatever tiny bit you start with, then my next step would be something called a vignette. Oh, tell me more. Oh, so fancy. I had to put it in there. A vignette. A, a vignette. Yeah. So basically in the world of styling and magazines, there are, of course, a million images of interiors and a vignette. If I do a shoot for a project that I finished, we'll do the wide shots and we'll do the details like the, the seam on the cushion or the way that the fabrics meet and look look together. And in between that, you've got a vignette and a vignette is kind of like, I'm just gonna see if I've got an image of one. Um, it's like a styling shot of a very small area with a couple of items in it. So it's kind of, let me just have a look. So for example, your dressing table or the classic shelfie or perhaps the area just before your home when you go out the door you know that's well, like when you have a book and some some glasses yeah, or something like that. okay but it's like a small small area or a small small surface in your home and you tackle that so now you're not just doing something where things get hidden away like your purse or your knicker drawer you're doing something that you look at so i would let's go with the idea of the dressing table so you've got your dressing table it's probably a bit chaotic it's probably a bit messy that's fine that's real life yeah. but for the for the purpose of this uh, uh project the vignette it's called a vignette is one image of a small area and it's set up for styling so basically just take everything off the space declutter it Get rid of all the old bits of makeup that aren't any good anymore. You know, give the table a proper good old clean and then set it up as if it's going to be a shop window. And it's really fun. It's just playing doll's houses, basically. So you might have a mirror on it or you might have a mirror already up there. And then just arrange things in a way that you think if I wanted to sell this for the most money in a shop, what would I make it look like? And that is basically the term styling. So you're not doing interior design because it's not a whole room. You're styling one little area. You're styling a vignette and you make your bottles. There's a couple of tips. Put things in threes or fives if they're in a group. Yeah, I prefer threes. And, and I'm yep. not keen on symmetrical either, you know, like on a fireplace. I don't no, know. I don't think you can. But then the other thing is work with height. Oh. Have some items on one side that are higher than on the other. That just balances the eye and makes it look more interesting. And then my classic, which I think everybody uses, is colour. So group in colour. So if you've got a metallic theme, like I've got these curtains here and they're sort of goldish. If on your dressing table, most of your metallic things, because a lot of beauty products do have metals in, don't they? I think you'll find if you're more of a silvery or a goldy person and then group them together in that sort of thing or if you find that you've got lots of lipsticks that are all the same color group them together yeah and just play shops just make yes. it look like a shop. and then the last thing you do is you put the lights on and you take a photo and you make the photo so you crop it so that it looks like somewhere that you would have in a kind of magazine advert and that's quite a nice sense of achievement and right. then you can keep that space. Now, every day that you use it, it's not going to look like that. But you can look at your phone at any time or your image and you can think, yeah, I can create that. And that just shows you the power of rearranging a space and creating something that looks its best. Just like that's almost like your dressing table's out for a party. Yes, I like, like that. You know, when we go out for a party, I'm sure we all do this. Put, on I put the eyelashes on, I put the lipstick on, I put the clothes on, I put the heels on. Ta -da! you know when I get home I don't look like that it all comes off no, no, no. and it's the same with your dressing table it's just a really nice exercise to make one part of your home look like it's going out to a party and that might just inspire you to do that in another little area or another little area and of course the process then elongates itself to where you actually end up doing that for a room but that's later well, that's it and because it's it's that success cycle isn't it if i can do that i can do that and actually i remember and i've got them curtains and they yep. look nice with that in there 
And it just exactly. starts, doesn't it? It starts to unfold. You don't need to know all the steps, just have to no. do the next step, don't you? Yes. So that's brilliant. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Pleasure. Lovely to chat to you. I want you to just introduce